okay? We did, I learned the old sheep song. I don't want to be a sheep, or I don't want to be a goat, I just want to be a sheep. Nah. We taught that in vacation Bible school for 25 years, we've taught that. Uh, and some of those, yeah, in that. You was at camp last year, wasn't you? What songs did you sing that you like? Huh? Can't remember? Oh. <laughs> Father Abraham. Father Abraham, that's a good one. Children go where, where I send you. What's your side? Pass it on. Pass it on. Okay. So again, remember some of these songs. Some of them's in the hymn books. A lot of, most of them ain't. But uh, learn them, know them, and again, you get a perspective. Okay, these are church camp songs, and again, that was was in the seventies. Um, like that one, seek me first. I, I picked that. I wanted. I knew that was in the hymn book there, the newer hymn book, um, because of that seeking and finding. Again, that, that's what I want to, want to bring to you here for today. So take your Bibles and open up the Song of Solomon, or as Spurgeon likes to refer to it, the Book of Canticles. Canticles means songs, song. And Solomon, of course, was the writer of this. Eight chapters uh, in this book. Small book, short book, and all this. Chapter 1, 3, and 5, there's a passage of scripture here that I want to, to share with you um, out of this book today, and, on, and it's all focused on that. It's one of the, one of my word studies, one of my word phrases that I've done in the Bible, seek and find every verse that talks about that. You shall, and again, there's a lot of these verses, Jeremiah 29, if you seek me, you shall find me when you search for me with, with all your heart. And uh, you can't, this was in my mind, and I had posted this out on Twitter just a little bit ago. Why, why do people say, and you come across all these different kinds of people, are, are you seeking the Lord? Well, yeah, they all say yeah. Uh, but here's the question. Have you found the Lord? Most of the time, oh, I'm seeking. I, I'm, I love the Lord. I, I know God. God knows me. Uh, but again, you see this, not, they're not finding him. They're not in a relationship with him. They're not growing. They're not multiplying. They're not, they're not being what they're supposed to be. They're not being what biblical Christianity is. And, and I come through this passage, the Song of Solomon, this past week, and I just so much in here, and I love to preach out of this book. I just, it has spoken to me over the years. Spurgeon opened it up to me. Uh, the spiritual side of this. Again, most people would read this and they would think that it was a Harlequin romance book. Uh, it, it's not. It's a relationship of Christ and the church uh, in this. So in chapter 1, if you follow with me here, chapter 1, then chapter 3, then chapter 5. Chapter 1, verse 6. Look not upon me because I am black, but because the Son hath looked upon me, my mother's children, they were angry with me. And here's the phrase. They made me the keeper of the vineyard, but my own vineyard have I not kept. Chapter 3, verse 1. By night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loved. I sought him, but I found him not. Here's the seek and the find, okay? Again, sought is a past tense. Uh, found is a past tense of seek and find. I will rise now. I will go about the city in the streets and in the broad ways. I will seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him, but I found him not. A watchman that go about the city, they found me. To whom I said unto them, Saw ye him whom my soul so long loves, loveth? It was but a little that I passed from them, but I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him, would not let him go, until I had brought him into my mother's house, and into the chamber of her that conceived me. Chapter 5, verse 1. It is again the same message, but with a different response. I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. <coughs> I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends, drink, yea. Drink abundantly, O beloved. I sleep, but my heart wakes. 
It is the voice of my beloved that knocks, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew, even my locks with the drops of the night. I put off my coat, how shall I put it on? I have washed my feet, how shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels was moved for him. I rose up to my beloved, my hands dropped with myrrh, my fingers with sweet-smelling myrrh, upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen that went about the city, they found me. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls, they took away my veil from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick of love. Let us pray. Bless the Father, I ask now, from reading these words, posed of the questions and the phrases, Lord, again, thank you for this little course. Seek the Lord. Call upon you. Ask. Find you in, in your mercies and in your grace, Lord. Lord, again, we know that there are many that struggle with this. They seek for answers. They seek for truth. They seek, Father, for the things and the hopes and the promises that have been spoken but never secured. Even this day, Father, we seek you. Father, again, I would not have one to walk out of this assembly that would say, I, I have sought for him, but I found him not. May you be found of us as we cry out to you, as we yield to you, as we learn of you. Holy Spirit, come. Do your best work. Fulfill every action that you said that you would do. And that again, Lord, you said if the word goes out, it will not return unto you void. So accomplish it, Lord. For your glory and your honor, Lord, I pray that I will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you see a twofold parallel, chapter 3 and 5. Here's this woman seeking after her beloved, and one time that she goes out, she can't find him. She's looking for him. She finds the, the keepers of the walls. It's, it's nighttime, not supposed to be out. And, uh, you know what hour you're not supposed to be out? You all know that memory had to be in curfew. Remember those blessed days when they used to have curfew? Nobody was allowed out after such and such time. Maybe we need to get back to that, huh? It's kind of hard to do when you got 24-7 hours at McDonald's and Sheets and Walmart and all that, isn't it? Uh, again, I'm out there last night. Again, warm weather. I'm allowed to then. Here comes my favorite Mineral County Sheriff's Department. Rolling up, checking on me. I guess someone had called. He never stopped anything. Just threw his hand up. So it must be... A crazy preacher's up there praying again, so leave him alone. Uh, but after hours, you're not supposed to be out there walking around. I see cars pull over. You ain't supposed to be here after hours, you know. But again, people seeking for something, and most of the time, they'll find it. What are they seeking for? Sin? Mischief? Trouble? Well, guess what? Those are easy commodities to find, aren't they? We're gathered here on a Sunday morning. What are we seeking for? What would you get up this morning on the Lord's Day seeking for? Lord, I need some answers. Lord, I need your presence. Lord, I, I need help. I can give you a, a score of dozens of people this morning. Again, they got up and they were seeking for nothing. They're not going to find anything because they're not seeking for nothing. They go to church to go through a religious attitude, a religious directive, but They'll walk away still empty-handed, still empty-hearted, because Christ don't mean nothing to them. God don't mean nothing to them. They're not, they, the, the reason that I read chapter 1, verse 6 first, they made me keepers of the vineyard, but my own vineyard did I not keep. The spiritual inclination to say, I want to be everything that God wants me to be. The more and more that I deal with death and dying, with going to a funeral, a memorial service, dealing with these with cancers, and the time uh, is not convenient for them. Their time's running out with Uncle Waco just a few months ago dealing with all of that. I'm watching people get ready to draw their last breaths and go out into eternity. I thank God that he instilled within me a long time ago, hey boy, you better get ready. Eternity's coming. Because I, I watch, I listen, I observe. You know what most people are living for today? You know what they get up for? Money, work, pleasures, 
entertainment, <coughs> possessions. This is what we're living for. They don't know what it, what it is to get up in the morning and say, as this woman, I, I, I'm seeking for God. I want some truth today. I want some of your presence today. I want to go out here and see signs and wonders done. I want to go out here and see answered prayers to say, look what the Lord did. The marvels of it. But again, it starts with this. Are you keeping your vineyard, your soul? Are you keeping your spiritual walk with God? This is where it all begins. You know the reason why people don't find him when they say, Oh, I'm seeking I'm seeking God. I'm seeking him. They're looking in the wrong place. They don't they don't have a wholehearted desire behind it. They're seeking him, but it's with a half hearted effort. You nothing more uh, sickening is to watch somebody do something half heartedly. And to me it's just flipping. I don't care if it's a handshake. You ever have somebody do a half-handed heart handshake? It's just, put that wet noodle back in your pocket and please try again. Since I, it's like a, they hit a nerve right there. It goes right up here and it lands right there on me when I get that wet noodle. Ugh, creeps me out. Because it's a half-hearted effort. Wholehearted effort. Now this is what we do when we come in and sing a song. We talked about this last Monday. You want to know one of the most healthiest signs? Of people that are keeping their vineyards. A simple song like that, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, brings tears to their eyes. Victory in Jesus. Walking with the Lord. These things is what stirs the heart. It's what stirs the soul. And again, when you, once you've had those great moments in past, if I was to ask you, I just asked you about the songs that you sang at church camp. Do you remember the greatest movements of God in your life? Do you ever go back and remember? I'm telling you, I was so close to the Lord. The fire was burning within me. I had such a passion. I couldn't get enough of the Word. I couldn't get enough of church. I saw someone posted there last night up here at, at the church here in Kaiser. Just got saved. She said, I'm, I'm not missing it. Now, she didn't get saved till the end of May, so that tells you how long has she been saved. Just a couple of weeks. But she acts like she's been doing it for a decade. <laughs> I don't miss any church service. Well, I said, you've been saved for three weeks. That's good. <laughs> I can, I'm reading my Bible. I'm telling other people about Christ. Oh, good. I, I, she's in her simplicity with it. She's just, just a child. Great. Wonderful. But you know, the test of time. Now in 10 years, I'm going to track her down and I'm going to say, now we're together. See, Christianity isn't based on those flare-ups. Oh, I was in a revival service. Oh, I was at a church camp. Oh, I was in BBS. Or something, I was in, in, in a church service and God got a hold of my life. And, and, he, and I knew the, the, the song of victory in Jesus. And I repented. That last, that first verse there, I repented. You don't find repentance anymore. Godly sorrow unto repentance. Wrongs are made right. Sins are exposed and put away by the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Keeper of the soul. Sin is exposed. It's an offense to God. And that sin is confessed. That sin is repented of. And I'm a keeper of my soul because I want my soul to be right. But this woman says, they made me keeper of my vineyard, but my own vineyard I didn't keep. I didn't make the wrongs right. I didn't put away the worldly ways. I didn't put, a, put away my sin. I, I kept up to it. I stayed in it. I practiced it. I loved it. I longed for it. This is the addictions that we've got going on today. The drugs, the alcohol, the tobacco, uh, the, the pornography, the lust, the pride, the anger, all the sins of the flesh. They stay in them and they bring them into the church. And then they go, oh, well, I'm okay. I am satisfied with Jesus. Well, I'm glad you are, but he ain't satisfied. Keeper of the vineyard. This is where the seeking and finding starts. I want my vineyard to be kept. I want it to be clean. I want it to be holy. And any time I sin and fail, and this is the problem that I run into with other people, I hate my sin. You hate your sin? This means yes. This means no. You hate your sin? I despise it. 
I despise every time I pray. I despise every time uh, I'm not in prayer when I ought to be in prayer. I despise every time God sets someone in front of me to speak about Christ and, and I let it pass right off my shoulder and, and 30 seconds afterwards I said I just missed an opportunity. I, I hate when I'm sitting in front of the television and I'm saying this is not pleasing to you Lord and I'm convicted about that but you know what I do? Nothing. I stay right there. I'm not, a, I'm not keeping my vineyard. And guess what Satan's doing? I got them now. I got them. They're, they're so far away. They, they're seeking for you, but I don't have to worry about a thing because they'll never find you because they're not doing it with all their heart. So chapter 3. That, this is the foundation. Keeping of the soul. Chapter 3. Uh, we start with this now. So this beloved, she, she rises up. Uh, by night on my bed, I sought him in her mind. She's seeking him, whom my soul loves. And again, here's another question and answered. Why don't people who say that they're seeking Christ find him, why aren't they walking in the fullness of joy? I often quote this in my prayer time of Psalm 23. Now, most people know Psalm 23 because of funerals, all right? But there's so much more than just funerals in that beloved psalm, Okay. David says in that, when he writes that, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. This is bliss. You ever been by the still waters and the green pastures? It's bliss. It's perfect. You know, can, can it, is this not heaven on earth? Can it not get any better than this? But David goes on. He goes on with the psalm, and he talks about this. You know, God gives these things. He sets a table in front of his enemies. He gives them a staff. He gives them a rod. He gives them all these blessings. And no matter that he is walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not leave you. I will not let fear get the best of you. Praise your name. Praise your name. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy goodness and mercy proceeding from the throne of God. The cup is overrunning. It's not three quarters full, half full, quarter. You sought him, but you could not find him. Why? Because your cup's only half full. The joy of the Lord is when the cup is overflowing and running forth is to say, it, I have never been at a climactic peak as what I am now with my relationship with Jesus Christ. I am so in love with him. When you've got to go back and look to church camp, 20, 30 years, that was the closest I've ever been with the Lord. Now again, we talked about it Monday night. We're coming up on halfway through 2017. Where are you at? This is that constant question. Where are you at? Where are you at? Because again, if you're not perspective of where you're at, you're not keeping your vision. If you say here in June, compared to January, I'm furthest away now from the Lord than I have ever been. Sin dominates me. The Bible holds no attraction for me. Prayer is obsolete. And the church is a whimsical idolatry. I have no relationship with Christ Jesus in my heart, in my mind, or my soul. This is a lost man, a lost woman, who is on the verge of going out of this world into an eternal hell. And here we are as the body of Christ. That ought to bother us. That ought to stir us up saying, no, I will not let them go. This is my loved one. This is my companion. This is my friend. This is my foe. I will not let them perish. I sought him whom my soul loves. I, I am looking for him, but I cannot find him. There are so many that are in the church today seeking for him, but they can't find him. You know why? Because he has withdrawn himself. The church today, the presence and the power that we were talking about, the miracles, the reason that they are not practiced and done in the United States today, and they are so, so hard to find, like a needle in a haystack. Hey, I dropped a paper clip out there in the yard. Please go find it. Well, in the front yard, the side yard, the back yard, where'd you drop it? I don't know, but it's out there. You're going to be a long time searching, aren't you? you got to go around asking people. That's the reason I loved it when you said answer prayer. I wish we could fill ten minutes up every church service with this uh, of saying, I just got an answer prayer. 
Look, I just want to share what God did this week. I had this glorious opportunity to hand out a track this past week and, and got to deal with someone about eternity. And on and on it goes. These are people that have sought the Lord and found Him. But the reason that people come in empty cups, you know, the old the, the beggars on the streets when they used to put a couple coins in and shake it, is to say, give, give, give. You know, we don't do that anymore. Now it's dollar bills. So they really don't shake it. But, you know, give, give, give. They're, they're, they're wanting a handout. And people are coming in and they're saying, my cup's empty and I want you to fill it. So the church offers a fast. And again, everything's instant now, right? Microwaves, fast food. Everything's that quick, quick, quick. Emotions. Entertainment. Because it fills quick. It's a fast-paced kind of thing, and it excites the emotions, and it stirs up the adrenaline. How long does that adrenaline last? You guys get ready to pull out of here, and you're getting ready to pull back out here on 220. And all of a sudden, a car not putting their light on, and or that you didn't see, or whatever. It, it, I mean, man, it's just the uh, uh, tip of the nose from an accident. What happens? <laughs> adrenaline pumps. Put on the brake. Horn blare. Wave. <laughs> Just missed you. Have a good day. Thumbs up, right? Man, I mean, you get the old adrenaline pumping, doesn't it? How long does that last? Get the shakes. Calm down. Respiratory is changed. Heartbeat accelerates. Now everything, next five, ten minutes, starts to calm back down. It was a quick impulse, but as quickly as it comes, it leaves. And I'm telling you that this Christianity that I talk about, preach about, talk, pray about, and want to have other people experience, it is not a quick and done thing. It is a day in and day out process of keeping your vineyard so that when you seek Him, you find Him. When you call unto Him, He answers. You're not laying there at the bed at night thinking about Him. Jesus, where are you at? Where's the answered prayers? Where's the miracles? Where's the mercies at? I sought Him, but I found Him not. I will rise now. Hey, I got to spur to action here. I got to get up. I got to go seek him. I got to go enter into my closet. I got to get in front of my Bible. Lord, speak. You go back to when you was keeping your vineyard. When you was in the Word. When you was in prayer. When you was telling others about Christ. That's the closest that you was at. You know why? Because the reason that people seek him and don't find him is they go to places where he ain't. You're not going to find Christ in the bar. You're not going to find him in the ways of this world. You're not going to find him in front of the television set. You're not going to find him on the, on the phones and the Instagram and all the other social media stuff. You're going to find him where he established the four pillars, the basic principles of Christianity. You find him where he's at. Whose word is this? It's God's word. I don't know why I can't get an answer out of that. It's God's Word. And if it's God's Word, guess where He's at? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. You go to the things where He's at. If two or three of my people are gathered together in my name, there I am. You go to where He's at. He's got people seeking Him in all these movements, and all these different things. To go to where he's at. I sought him, but I could not find him. I will rise now, and I will go seek him. i got to get back to where he's at. Now, the problem that I'm finding is, is that there are people that, it, it's not a matter of hours. It's not about a day-to-day -day comparison. They go weeks and months without him. I ask, six months into this year, Greatest thing that God has done for you. I don't know. What? Did God speak to you this past week? I don't know. They, they're not seeking Him. They stop. They cut it off. You know, they pull that little stopgap thing and it just shuts everything down right then and there. This is, this is the thing of God. And when that happens, when that moment takes place, I saw him, but I could not find him. Now, I went ahead and I read the other verse that goes into this, verse 4. It was a little. It was just a little bit after that. 
short duration, not weeks and months, but days and hours. I, I, I pass, as I pass from them, I found him. Now again, all the emotions are relived, all the experiences. I held him, and I would not let him go. Clutched. Clutched and hold on. You let that little boy back here, you let him have a bad nightmare. You let him have, have a fall down in an accident, and he starts crying, I want my mommy. Pap ain't going to satisfy that. Held on and would not let him go. Crisis in the midst of that. Oh, how many memories of that experience. I held him up. And, and again, people pledge that. I've gotten away from the Lord, but I'm telling you, I, I, won't, I won't fall back to that. I've backslid, but I won't do that again. I hear this prayer all the time. I'm listening to the boys as they pray that. Uh, they prayed it every night for school. Give us an opportunity to witness a school next week. Guess what? School's over. <clears throat> 180 days. How many days did you witness? 180 days. Missed. You know what people are doing six months into this year? They still ain't talked to anybody about Christ. Still ain't talked to anybody about eternity. You sought him, but you didn't find him because you weren't a keeper of your soul. we got to get back to this. Southern Baptist, lowest baptisms ever. Lowest attendance on Sunday mornings, and I keep reverberating to him the truths. Don't you understand why he has left us? Because we left him. We got to get back and hold on to him and not let go. And you think, okay, she's learned her lesson. She got up out of bed. I will rise now. I'll go find him. I found the men in the city. I asked them, have you have you seen him? Uh, have you found him? And they didn't have an answer, but verse 4, it was just a little bit, and I found him, I clung to him, and I wouldn't let go. You say, okay, lesson learned, repeat behavior. No, that won't happen anymore. Chapter 5, same scenario. She rises up. She says, now he's at the door knocking. <coughs> here, comes, here comes her beloved knocking at the door saying, open to me. Let me come in. Let's, let's have some fellowship. Jesus comes knocking on the heart door. Monday through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every evening he's knocking. Where are you at? Did you open your Bible today? Are you praying? Oh, Lord, I'm so tired. I'll catch you tomorrow. Lord, I, I, this show's just about over. I'm telling you, I'll catch you later. You know? We make excuses. It's Sunday. Well, I'll get back to it next week. We make excuses. Now she rises. She looks for him. Now the men of the city have caught her out the second time. The first time, they said, what are you doing out here? And she said, I'm looking for my beloved. Have you found him? And there's no answer. So they let it pass. But now the second time, now the men of the city, they, they knock her down. They beat her. They say, you're not supposed to be out. You're in trouble here with this. But there is no finding him. You know, it is this game that people want to play, but God don't play games. And I thought about that as I said. I, you know, here I'm at a memorial service, and I'm thinking about they lost their their they lost their teenage son uh, car accident about 10, 12 years ago. Uh, sat there in the home, prayed with them, ministered to them, get to the Lord, find the Lord. I was there when the mother died, uh, the grandmother died. These instances, time and time again, coming back saying, "Here's your invitation." Here's your opportunity. Get back to God. Seek Him. Find Him when you're doing it with your whole heart. And the church has got to deal with that question. Are you doing it with your whole heart? Half-heartedness, half-hazardness will not get it done. Keeper of the vineyard, you must be. Weed out the sin. Weed out the rot. Weed out the things of this world. Die to self. Take up your cross. And come follow me. What are you seeking? What have you found? Christ comes knocking at the door, stretches it. I'm here. I know you are, Lord. I feel your presence. You know, I can't, I cannot say. There's not one morning that I don't open and read my ten pages of my Bible and that God doesn't jump off the page at that time. I find him all the time there. That's a bliss for me. I'm thinking, man, Lord, this is just so great. And I think how many times people won't open the book, won't read the Bible, how much you miss it. I mean, I'm not talking about people across countries that we're talking about that they don't even have a Bible. They don't have translations in the Bible. I'm not talking about people that I know 
That's New Hampshire County, Mineral County, and they're illiterate. They cannot read. I thank God I got an education. I thank God that I was given the opportunity. I had my dad stand in front of the church and said, I'm going to challenge all of you to read your Bibles in December. I took that little track, that little, that, it does kind of look like this. It was just one little thing. And it was straight through January through December. Three or four page, three or four chapters every day. And I took that thing and treasured that thing. And I read my Bible for the first time. Loved it. Only I think only one or two years ever since that moment in 30 years have I ever not read my Bible through. I glean so much from it. You know why? Because I know that when I seek him, I'll find him in the book. And when I seek him, I'll find him in gathering of his brothers and sisters in Christ. And it doesn't have to be Sunday morning and Monday night. It could be Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, coughing. Hey, let's just get together and pray. You know, I do it over Fox and Hall. I've done it here. Let's have a Wednesday night prayer meeting. Let's have a Thursday night prayer meeting. Well, we don't normally do that. Well, guess what? Uh, so what? If you seek him, you will find him. And I've gone. I've gone up and down the East Coast. I've gone cross country seeking him. I've gone to those that have found him to say, tell me about it. And they've, they've invested in me, their memories, their experiences. You know why? Because the appetite's wet. I'm not going to be satisfied with anything else. I'm not going to be satisfied with the things of this world. I struggle with all that. I struggle with all those things of possessions and, and money and entertainment and joys and pleasures of this life that everybody else invests in. And that's what they're seeking for. I don't get the fulfillment out of that that I get in these spiritual things. Because when I'm seeking those things, it robs me of keeping my vineyard. They made me keeper of the vineyard, but my own vineyard I have not kept. You want to know why people fall into depression and discouragement? And they fall into sin. Well, so-and-so used to come. Where are they at? They fell. Why did they fall? Because they didn't keep their vineyard. They stopped seeking him day in and day out. It was acceptable to them to miss a couple days. It was acceptable to them to miss a couple weeks. And he was gone. And Satan took full advantage of him. Our nation stopped seeking him a long time ago. Week after week. All these different times and places. And they missed him. Church is in the same position. I don't want you as an individual. <coughs> as a family, to get in that same place in that same moment. Here's where we're at. This is what it's all about. If you seek me, you will find me when you do it with all your heart. And these are the joys of the Lord. Let's pray. Blessed Father, I thank you now in the midst of this, in this moment, Lord, that again,